yeah, I think it's already started. Uh, who already starting watching me, please let me know. Do you, can you hear me? Everything right? So can you see maybe my screen? A long time I didn't stream. So, and I don't know what's going on right now. Just few, I, I think two minutes and we will start. Yeah, okay, so uh, I think I will slowly <laughs> can see love from the way. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we can start slowly. Um, let me, I will do the presentation mode. So today will be some, uh, not, I, I, I not will say this is will be exactly presentation. Actually, this is will be a uh, much uh, sharing with the my knowledge. Uh, hello everyone. So we just we just started. Mm, actually, I not will see any the screen. So uh, and I will try to read the chat, but maybe a bit later on. Love from Pakistan. I think we should say where everyone from. Okay, but uh, we will do it later on. I think. Uh, long time I didn't make any the streams, so if I will be now like a uh, damp, I'm sorry for that. Classical design architects. Uh, this is really hard topic. We will talk about it maybe. Uh, okay, guys, let me do like that. All the questions after this small presentation for you because uh, I really spent a lot of the time for this presentation. Uh, the Maya company allow me to show you the some idea uh we w and not only just idea we i allow to you show the some real project what we will do and this uh, presentation it's uh, like a start what i will do in the next time because in the next time we will already talk uh, inside in the revit inside in the model but right now it's just a like complex idea okay so it's already like 15 uh, persons watching me so it's not like hundreds, but it's okay. Uh, I no need be famous. <laughs> uh, okay, guys. So uh, the topic today will be about the Beam communication language. What what is the Beam actually? Actually, as you can see, it's Beam here. <laughs> what is actually the Beam for the Beam manager? What is the Beam for the, for example, for the chief engineer? And what is the Beam, for example, for the architect? Uh, Three, uh, three of them understanding it really differently. Uh, and the main thing what we need to do, like a BIM manager, uh, we need to uh, try to uh, push it up to the make BIM like communication language, not the paper, the BIM. And this is really, really hard. So uh, first of all, I will start uh, from some small uh, presentation of the uh, company where I'm working because uh, you know me er er already a long time, but most of you even didn't know where I'm working, what I'm doing. Uh, and uh, I will take like uh, five minutes to a bit represent it, what we're doing. So uh, the first slide, it will be like, what actually the CPU pride? CPU pride, it's where I'm working actually. Uh, we are working with the really huge scale projects, uh, n n not only the huge projects, so the, but uh, the first thing what I'm do we are doing, we're really working with the huge projects. Uh, this small but strong company uh, located in the Moscow, so we have the uh, around 200 people in our office, so the company uh, located, as we understand, in Russia, uh, and we are integrated, we are being in, uh, we are beam integration uh, from uh, say since I think 2013. So as you understand, the company is still young b on, on the world market because on the world market, uh, we have the companies from the 18th century and the oldest one. Uh, but we already have the, a lot of the experience and um, as the older company, we not uh, using only the one software. It will be a mistake if, uh, for example, 
in my company we will be using the only one software so so uh, as uh, any other company uh, in the world we also using the uh, all the uh, softwares on the market uh, but we have actually two uh, programs which is we are using uh, like on the 50 by 50 by 50 this is archicad and uh, revit and that's why here is the open beam as you can see here um, give me a second he's highlighting yeah that's why here is the open beam because we are trying to the push this idea open beam inside uh, outside uh, from the our company to the market not only we are because uh, open beam it's not our idea open beam it's the uh, idea from the uh, europe but anyway the open beam it's uh, something like the open source uh, you are sharing with the not only knowledge you are sharing also the with your work if uh, if if say it simplistic okay uh, now you understand like we are working with the big projects so we are working with the all the software and uh, what the project actually we have uh, if you are using the archicad uh, you know this project for example this project we have done uh, in my company in cpu pride uh, we are working with the some um, for example the universities we are creating the universities we are creating the high-rise buildings uh, like landscape uh, not landscape i mean the uh, part of the cities uh, and of course the malls where everyone creating the malls here is the uh, not some uh, I think uh, here is the not some uh, new new thing we are working with the uh, really famous architects for example like uh, Jan Helmut I think if you are uh, watching the my Instagram you already saw this project like hundreds of times maybe i will post it one more hundred times i don't know uh, we are working with the for example jan helmut we are working also with the zaha hadid we are working with the nick and ck and uh, from this stage uh, my story is starting actually because uh, right now i will tell you why it's beam communication it uh, really matter and why you need to uh, understand the beam it's not only the 3d model let's say <coughs> Um, when we, we will start working with the Nikken CK, actually this is company from the Japan, if you don't know, um, we have started receiving the files like this. Uh, some documentation, what they sent was, uh, they have the Japanese uh, hieroglyphs, uh, hieroglyphs, hieroglyphs, I think. Parameters in the Revit also was they have the hieroglyphs uh, in Revit model names everywhere was the uh, some different names which is uh, hard to understand what's going on uh, it not wasn't it uh, it wasn't big uh, big trouble but uh, this is was to uh, first uh, stage where we start uh, the second thing uh, uh, what we have find like a small trouble this is a huge iteration with the documentation for example if you want to send something you should uh, follow all this way uh, for example, you change the wall somewhere, just a simple example. And you <laughs> should follow all this iteration till the client will approve it. Uh, and it's actually, this is a big problem because uh, as you understand, it's time. But uh, we cannot spend a lot of the time because we have the contract and in, on, in contract we have the date when we should submit everything. And this is a problem. Uh, anyway, we starting thinking how we can uh, how we can change this situation because uh, as you can see the middle part here is the beam review uh, and it's the biggest part because it's two times it's going inside to the beam some information. We started thinking uh, from this side how we can improve improve it and of course uh, the main question uh, how we can synchronize all design process in one time. Okay, the next thing, what we have, for example, the, like a problem, uh, like a problem and challenge in our company, we have not typical projects. All these uh, projects, it's from the company where I'm working. So, and all these projects, as you can see, it's not typically. Uh, one of them, it's a uh, high-rise building. One of them, it's like uh, business centers, uh, business centers again, and uh, the stadiums. And uh, you cannot create one um, rule for all of these uh, buildings because they have different uh, 
different uh, usage, different ability. So, and even the different size. And different construct, uh, contractors, of course. So, we are going, we starting uh, working uh, with the, mm, uh, the, some scheme uh, to find where we can improve uh, our work. And we found, as you can see here, develop design solution and building a BIM model. It's taking the 50th working day. It's longest thing uh, in the scheme uh, when we sending the model. So 50 working days, as you understand, if we will improve on the 5% here, we will get much better result than if we will, for example, we'll do something here because here only the one day. So that's why we are starting working with the beam. Uh, what we can do with the beam? As I said uh, before, we wanna make the beam like a language. And the next thing, <coughs> we were starting uh, searching. Uh, we did some small searching uh, in uh, some of our projects. Uh, sorry guys, I didn't translate everything because uh, some of the information you know needs, uh, it's not so main to understand, but uh, the main information I already translate. Sorry, this for this uh, off topic. Okay, we did small uh, research and on, the, on this research what we did? Uh, we just trying to understand how the, um, uh, the information going inside the in project. And as you can see on the left side, uh, we have here the, for example, two uh, contra uh, contractors. We have here the uh, cloud-based, uh, cloud uh, how it's called, uh, BIM 360, let's say like that. Okay, and uh, we are working here like general designer, but we have client and client have the consulting. So we should submit our model to the client Client given to uh, given to uh, client sending this model to the cons uh, consulting, consulting checking our model, and only after consulting checking our model, its model going back to the us, uh, some comments going back to the us, and we should change something. For example, so here's iteration like that. On the right side, as you can see, we don't have any cons uh, consulting from the client side, but we have a lot of different contractors. It's also the problem. Uh, on the project tree, we have another situation. Here, we already know more general designers. Uh, here, we are just uh, constructor, contractors. <laughs> so, we are now working for someone. Uh, but here, we also have the concept, uh, concept developer uh, who creating the conceptual, uh, conceptual part. And on the right side, we have another situation. We have a lot of different uh, contractors, really. Uh, actually, I just here showing to you like three, but actually there it's like 16. And uh, try to understand what you need to, to do to uh, make the rule for the 16 different contractor contractors. It's really hard. Uh, so what we can do? We can hire more people, we can uh, hire more assistants, be managers, chief engineer, no, chief chief engineer, why not? So, does it help us? Uh, I think uh, you will be shocked, it will help us. But as you can see here on the gray uh, line, it will help us only on the sum stage, till the sum stage. After that one, we not will get uh, a lot of the, mm, uh, a lot of the improvement. After that one, uh, a lot of the people in our company will get uh, much resources. Uh, we will spend a lot of the money for that. And uh, thanks God, if we will finish our project uh, without any debt, it will be really nice. Uh, we are cho choose the other way. We wanna optimize the people which is we have. Optimize it doesn't mean uh, we wanna like uh, fire them, no. We want to save our people, but we want to somehow change uh, the role inside the company. Uh, a bit low, I'm sorry. Thank you for saying that. Now, uh, JP say, now it's, uh, is it okay or not? So, um, what I'm saying? Ah, I'm saying about optimized. Uh, if you will optimize your uh, people, uh, till the some stage uh, it will be takes uh, not much resources, but uh, the mm, uh, improvement also not will be great. 
But when we will come to the end, you will see the another story. We not will spend a lot of the resources, but our people will uh, have the new role. They will uh, can do something new. So, and uh, what we should do, what we should change, you will say to change, mm, change the, to optimize our people. Uh, actually, still a little low, give me a second. Let me know, one, two, three, is it okay? <laughs> Thank you, JP. Um, we think uh, like a chief engineer is the head of the project. Uh, maybe it's something strange, but the chief engineer, it uh, I'm being manager and chief engineer for me, it's client. Why it's like that? Because when I'm submitting the model, the chief engineer, only chief engineer uh, can talk with the client. And if the chief engineer understand uh, why we need to create the model, why the model should have, for example, the some parameters and blah, 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 uh, we will get the really nice model. Why? Because uh, let's, the, let's uh, say like that. Uh, our subcontractors can uh, submit all documentation and they will do everything right, but they will submit, for example, not so uh, clean model. Mm, and if the chief engineer not understand this is the, this the problem, uh, he will say to the, our subcontractors like, okay, you submitted documentation, so let's, uh, let's we will pay for you. But this is not right because uh, when I get this model from the subcontractors and it's not clean, who will uh, improve this model to submit to the client because we want to uh, get our money from the client for the nice model, right? Uh, I think, uh, as you understand, uh, general designer will be um, cleaning this model and submitting to the client because our subcontractors already get the money and he not will do anything for free. So this is really st strange, but it's working like that. So that's why here on the scheme is how it's working. Uh, now in our company, uh, our uh, client, our contractors, for example, sending us model. We are checking this model. We are creating the uh, clash detective. We are checking the uh, all, all the parameters. So we are analyzing the model. After that, we are sending all this uh, research, all this report to the chief engineer and for the architect. Architect uh, checking the technical solutions uh, on this uh, model. If everything all right, they reporting to the chief uh, engineer like everything all right uh, or everything bad. So uh, if they saying like everything bad, the chief engineer sending uh, all information to the con uh, our subcontractors and they should change everything. They changing again, sending to us to the beam uh, to the beam department, and again and again and again till uh, we not will get really nice model, uh, which is we can we, um, submit to the our client. So, let's talk about another story. Uh, for example, uh, you have the ventilation uh, and uh, you have like meeting. On the meeting, you engineer and architects uh, talking about where will be hole for the, this ventilation. They saying, okay, this is will be on the left side. Uh, can you just uh, make it like 500 millimeter uh, a bit left? They did it, uh, but on the next meeting, uh, we are checking the model, the ventilation system again, not right position. Why? Because they don't using uh, actually on the 100% BM model. And this is the problem because they checking the just drawings, architects changing, for example, the model, but didn't change the drawings. and. That's why I'm talking about the uh, beam language. Okay, I think this is, uh, you understand. What actually uh, also we are doing the in company, uh, for example, me like the beam department, right? Uh, we are creating the uh, Navy Smart model. We are creating the uh, clash detectives. Uh, so we are doing the clash detective. We are finding all the problems in the model, as you can see, and all this report we are sending to the chief engineer. Architects also get this model, but architects also getting the um, paper report, which is uh, saying to him, uh, saying to them, like they have some problems, for example, with the uh, classificators, 
or some of the parameters it's not uh, right and they should change it and also we are doing the mm, like deep uh, report uh, to understand uh, maybe they change some solutions it's not already been work but we should understand if they for example change the position of the ramp we should understand if they did it and also we are getting some the mm, information from the our mm, consulting from the our client i mean uh, client getting the information from the consulting consulting sending to the client client to us and uh, it's really good mm, uh, good thing because uh, for example if i did mistake like a bidding department i can check uh, check it twice by this research this is really nice okay so the next thing what i want to say the b model it's not only architecture uh, or maybe it's not only the construction it's not only engineering the b model it's everything in one time because uh, for example if you will submit a really nice architecture part but everything uh, other other thing will be really bad it's not the b model it's <laughs> just a 3d model because you Okay, the architecture part, the architect park, the part it's really nice. You can work with that, but other thing it's not working. What you will do? So this is really bad. That's why you should somehow uh, to make the connection between all discipline uh, when you're creating the B model. And IFC will help you so much because uh, you know the, for example, in our company. Uh, the const uh, constructors uh, constructors working uh, in Tecla, not in Revit. Uh, some people working in Tower 8. Uh, and as you understand, we have a lot of different software. Uh, we cannot using, for example, only the Revit solution or only Graphisoft solution. That's why we are using the IFC files. But we have the some simplest rule for the IFC files, which is you can see right now on your screen. So I think everyone knows this. Uh, mm, everyone knows these uh, rules. So I not will explain. I just want to mention the IFC. It's the if it's not the uh, far future. This is near future actually. Why we need um, checking the model? Uh, for example, uh, when I'm saying uh, it's not clean model, what I mean? Sometimes I'm getting the model from the engineer, which is <laughs> creating in 3D, I don't know why, in 3D, the, uh, all the numbers. Why they did they doing that? I don't have any idea because I don't need uh, so, uh, so much the uh, load model. Okay, another thing, can you see how much here the polygons? He has one million polygons. It's much than architecture part. It just engineer system, as you can see, because uh, uh, they don't think about, uh, they didn't think about how uh, we will open this model. They just sending and uh, forgot about that. That's why you need to have the rules. Uh, like, uh, let's say this is will be like uh, basic rules for the all the system. So this is just complex problem. Uh, your object, uh, it's not just architecture, as I say. It's architecture, engineer, uh, construction part, everything. And they should talk on the one language. Uh, to talk in one language, you need some standards. How you can create your standards? Everyone asking, like, how I can create the standards? Uh, can you send me standards? Sometimes they're asking, right? Um, actually, uh, all the company become to the uh, own standards by this way they have the some independent regulation for example some people uh, want to create the really clean model just uh, let's say mm, it's his own uh, desire that's it after that uh, they already uh, understand how it mm, for example create a model uh, on the right uh, side they already starting create some rules for example the name of the model should have uh, for example mm, number of the usage of Revit, for example, or mm, their families uh, should create with the types, with the right name, without 111, 222, or something like that, and uh, on and on. After that, they creating like uh, simple rules. It's already going to the uh, customer on, I mean, the client requirements. For example, in one day, the 
uh, you get the client which is already uh, and this client already have the nice beam standard and they send it to you of course you should working by this beam standard and what does it mean when you're working by his uh, beam standards sometimes you get into from him some idea and you are starting to improving your beam standards and you get into your beam standard so it's working like that actually on the market of course you can get uh, you can take the uh, ICO on uh, 906650 uh, but uh, this standard actually this is uh, for the country this is a worldwide standard but we are talking now about the your internal standard about the company one so guys if you have right now questions you can uh, write it and i will later on i will read it we creating the our own standard uh, which is really simple we have like uh, some uh, some issues to the create to the LOI and to the LOD what is that uh, low LOI and LOD uh, it's a level of detail and level of information so and uh, also we have inside like uh, how we should uh, send the file how we should uh, name the file simplest rule but it's working uh, you cannot talking about the standards without the cloud solution because the cloud solution this is the mm, let's say basic of your standards everywhere everything all the, your models should be somewhere be saved we are using uh, in my company for example we are using the beam cloud so we are using the after this uh, 360 and beam collab beam collab actually this is killer future why because beam collab can work with anything and beam collab doesn't matter this is after desk or the if this is the greatest soft and uh, that's why the beam collab i think have the great future uh, if they will develop it but anyway anyway here i'm not uh, trying to represent some software here just trying to say uh, to show you what we are using so as you can see we are not using only the one software and you when you are talking about the beam you shouldn't think like Revit equal beam or Graphisoft equal beam. It's not like that. Beam, it's the information of the model. That's it. Next. Oh, I'm like a teacher. Next. So here's just an uh, example of the model. Uh, we did it a long time ago. It's just when I, till I'm talking, I just showing to you. Uh, when you're creating your model, it's not uh, also only about the 3D. Uh, actually, the beam model is not about the 3D, you should understand it. It's also about the information. Uh, you should submit information, your client should use this information. Actually, when you're creating your model, uh, this information, what you will put inside of that, uh, client will be used, uh, for example, on the construction site. So if the client cannot use, for example, your information on the construction site, your BIM model, it's nothing. Because uh, you cannot do with this model anything. This is just a nice 3D model. He can just rotate, for example, uh, when he want to ask money from the bank, he will just rotate it and saying, OK, I will get this model. But it's not a mm, BIM model, actually. So maybe later on I will show you this video. Uh, so this model, which uh, I mean this uh, project with, uh, which is I show you before, uh, as you can see, have the all information, which is the our government, Russian government asking for the BIM model. Uh, it's the rule already. We should, uh, when we submitting the model to the government, uh, we should uh, place all the all the information inside to the model. If we don't have uh, some information inside of the mo in our model, uh, government not will um, pass our project. And this is really... Uh, everyone saying my microphone is low, but it's already on the... Mi mo okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's already on the maximum, I think. Anyway, okay, our government not will pa pass our project if... Um, uh, if we don't have all the parameters inside of that. So that's why it's really matter to check the model. It's really matter to uh, have their own standards to send to the, our subcontractors. Uh, and the mainest thing, your chief engineer or the project manager should ask everything from the, your subcontractors. They can submit, uh, for example, your to you um, some 
I don't know, like project data, for example, like uh, documentation. But uh, they also should submit to you the model. Uh, so when I'm talking about BIM communication, actually BIM communication, it's not only the mm, BIM model. BIM communication, it's also the visualization, as you can see here right now. Uh, for example, when you're representing to your model to the client or you know, when you're sending your model to the client, uh, he, he also needs to understand, for example, uh, how it will be looks like. And uh, BIM it's also about the visualization somehow, but it's about the visualization. visualization. Right now you can see the video which is we have done in the Twinmotion and Archicad. Uh, it's not taking the, a lot of the resources from the, our, mm, uh, from the our designers, I mean the 3D designers. Uh, d uh, they are doing the really perfect the renders, but uh, on the final stage. When we have uh, on the development stage, we are using the Archicad Twin Motion or the Revit Twin Motion, and this is the best solution what we can uh, what we can give to the, our client. So the next thing, uh, where is the future? Actually, the future is near. Future is AR and VR. We are also using these things. Uh, actually, you can see our office right now. Uh, when you're going to the client, sometimes uh, you can talk uh, with the, your client or with your subcontractors with documentation. But if you have, for example, the model, and if you have the AR model, you can walk around, you can see the, some problems uh, inside your, in your model, and uh, it's much better to talk by this way. Okay, uh, so uh, let's, uh, I will a bit uh, make the small conclusion. Uh, BIM model, it's uh, not only the, it's not only the model. BIM, this is communication language on the different uh, stage. It's communication language to the submit information. This is communication language to the find collision. This is uh, also the communication language to represent for your client some idea, as you can see right, right, right now on your screen. What is not BIM, you will ask. Uh, actually, BIM it's not the some software program. Just you should remember that Revit it's not uh, it's not the BIM. Revit it's the program for creating the BIM, and this is uh, the same thing for the Archicad, same thing for the I don't know for other BIM software. For example, Bentley Systems is also not a BIM. Okay, the parametric modeling it's also not a BIM. Parametric modeling it's creating the form, or by some parameters. Automatization, not a BIM. And you can read everything here. And of course, yeah, I want to say the cloud services, it's also not BIM, cloud services, it's just the part of the BIM standard. Uh, you know this project, uh, so we have uh, we have done this project with the Grasshopper. Mm, I mean, the, this part of the roof we, done have, uh, we have done with the Grasshopper. It was really hard to create this uh, roof because um, the panels uh, was uh, like 4,000 types, and uh, by Grasshopper we change it uh, to the only the 100 par uh, different types. And uh, for this solution, uh, Grasshopper really help us. But uh, um, let's say uh, like that. Uh, we use the Grasshopper, but our B model become B model if uh, you're using the Grasshopper? No. We just creating the some solution with the parametric side. So uh, when you put the some information, for example, the size of the panel, uh, for example, area of the your panel, the material, and blah blah blah. So this will be the model. And so I already actually <laughs> sorry I already said what is the beam. <laughs> beam it's the parameters inside of the your model. That's it actually. And uh, yes, now it's time to for the questions because uh, it was like uh, my uh, first presentation. I already didn't uh, make the some streams a uh, long time, I think more than one year. And uh, maybe you have some uh, questions, uh, it will be great because uh, now I can talk with you with the um, projects which is I can show to you. Uh, on the next uh, stream, which is will be after one week, I will show you already an uh, object, a project, 
Uh, and I will show you the some uh, the problems on this project. I will show you the some uh, the let's say tricks and tips like uh, YouTube uh, YouTubers uh, like to say. Okay, uh, let me I will go back. Waste my waste my waste my models. I will go back to here. I think uh, now it's time for the questions. Uh, I already saw the one question. I didn't see. Can we have email? Some question. I have uh, the email on the my uh, on the my page, but okay, I will leave it here one more time. Uh, I think it's like that. I not remember already. Dot com. Or you can uh, go to the, for example, to the uh, Telegram channel. Give me a second. You can go to the my Telegram channel. Uh, you can write me there, you can go to the my Instagram, you can write me also there, and I will try to help you. And of course, uh, I should also mention company where I'm working, uh, they also they have the Instagram, you can follow us, uh, you can check the uh, projects what we did, what we are doing, because they are sometimes uh, the, uh, our PR managers uh, posting the some projects which is uh, not finished yet, but uh, it's under the construction. Uh, okay, guys, I'm waiting the questions uh, because uh, I did everything. I think uh, now everyone understands clearly. So the beam, <laughs> beam, it's not just uh, a model. Uh, give me a second, uh, I will... I will leave here because uh, because I just skipped the video. Maybe you want to see the video, all the video. It's not working uh, perfectly. Oh, okay, done. Maybe you want to see the video. Um, what else uh, about the BM? Ah, what else I want to say uh, about the beam? Uh, it I have the my own topics on the medium. If you wanna go there and check the some uh, topics about the beam, you also go there and check the some my uh, stories. Let's say, give me a second and I will show you the. I will I will try to um, share with you. Why is that? <laughs> Everything it's lagging. Sorry, guys. I think everyone can hear me because uh, I'm talking, talking, but maybe no one he can hear me. Oh, it's here. I found it. Here the link. If you want, you can join it. Okay, I don't think no one, no one have the questions, and I can, I can leave you, and I can say, <coughs> give me a second. I can say thank you for your time because uh, I'm really trying to uh, share with you guys with the uh, real information about the real project. Uh, I know you you really are f trying to find the information from the real side, from the, uh, the real B managers, and I'm trying to s uh, sharing with you the, with the, my knowledge. Maybe it will be uh, helps to you in your journey. Who knows? Okay, guys, so two minutes and I will leave. Any questions? I don't think so. <laughs> 20 people person watching me and no, no, not any questions. Okay, if you understand everything, I'm, I'm happy for that. Uh, it's really cool because uh, so smart audience, uh, I had only me have, okay, maybe Gavin Crump too, I don't know. Uh, so thank you guys for watching, uh, I want to say bye, and the next stream will be after one week. The new tutorial will be tomorrow. Uh, the new tutorial will be about uh, the one adding, which is really, very, uh, really will be nice to use, maybe you will use it. Uh, so, in the next week, I will try to post uh, some uh, Revit tutorials. Let's see. Right now, I, I, I don't know. I, I think I don't have uh, a lot of the time to creating the some tutorials. Uh, so, thank you guys for watching and see you.